Welcome to Sputnik, orbiting the world with me, George Galloway. And me, Gayatri. Bangladesh, one of the world's most populous democracies, continues to be populous, but has gotten a whole lot less democratic. Last year's general election in the country was boycotted by virtually everyone, except the ruling party. Fewer than 10% of the population voted. The reason for it being the unprecedented decision by the Prime Minister to refuse to hand over power to a neutral caretaker government in the run-up to the polls, thus helping ensure a free and fair election. Since then, Bangladesh has cascaded from one violent crisis to the next. Political murders are proliferating, kidnappings and disappearances too. A personal friend of mine, a member of parliament, Ilyas Ali, is one of those disappeared, kidnapped at gunpoint and never seen or heard of again. But it's not just personal in my case. The absolute mutual antipathy of the two ladies at the top, on the one hand, the Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, daughter of the slain founder of the state, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and on the other hand, the leader of the opposition, Begum Khalida Zia, widow of Sheikh Mujib's successor. It's a given and will never cease. But though tireless efforts are made in Bangladesh to criminalize the politicians who just left office, it has been rare for either side to threaten the lives of the respective leaders. Until this week, as we speak, the leader of the opposition has been locked up in her office, literally padlocked in, and surrounded by thousands of armed troopers. More than that, she's been sprayed with gas and pepper spray and is reportedly finding breathing difficult. Democracy may be being murdered in Bangladesh, but if the opposition leader is murdered too, a nation of 160 million people will become literally uncontrollable. Joining us now to make sense of it all is Homayon Kobir, special advisor to Mr. Tarek Rahman, senior vice chairman of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party. Thanks for joining us, Homayon. Bring us up to thank date. You. What's exactly happening in the country right now? Well, uh, thank you, George and Gayatri, for inviting me here this afternoon. George, uh, Bangladesh is a country close to your interests and uh, particularly in your role uh, as a former member of parliament. I represented uh, in, the largest in our hamlets, you represented the largest the Bangladeshi community in the UK, Europe, or you know, outside of Bangladesh, anywhere in the world. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what uh, stems the discussion here is that on 5th of January 2014, we had a farcical parliamentary election in Bangladesh where 153 parliamentary seats, a parliamentary majority, uh, were elected without a single e a citizen being elig you know, uh, casting their vote, which is absolutely unopposed. Unopposed, 153 yes. MPs unopposed you know, yes. because out, of the boycott. Out of no. a potential 90 million electorate, you know, hardly a single citizen, eligible citizen, who are entitled to exercise their democratic franchise, did not vote in this election. This is Sheikh Hasina's regime today is an illegitimate government which is not owned by the people. It, ha it only has a questionable, perhaps a questionable 10 percent of, you know, eligible voters who voted in that election. Um, 153 seats, you know, a parliamentary majority without a single, you know, without, without mm. uh, you know, the eligible electorate having their say, prior to the 5th January 2014 elections, the farcical elections, the partisan elections that the people of this country, of Bangladesh, overwhelmingly rejected because, you know, neither it reflected their will and expression international democratic, the international democratic community condemned those elections in terms of participation. It did not reflect the will or expression of the people of Bangladesh. Sheikh Hasina promised that she was averting a constitutional crisis by holding those elections. But in fact, what she did at the time, she brought about a constitutional crisis. Mm. So you had the tenure of the last parliament extending to over nearly a month and a half after the farcical elections of 5th January 2014. The par parliamentary legislature in Bangladesh has 300 seats. Uh, you ended up with 600 parliamentarians. You ended up almost with a 100 member cabinet. So you had two cabinets, basically the cabinet that existed uh, prior, prior to, to the 5th of January and, and post 5th January. Mm. So in fact, it, her 
one-sided election when the International Democratic Community was saying, you know, you need to hold a part, you know, an election that is participatory, that is inclusive. Mm -hmm. Wide public opinion in the country, all print and broadcast, broadcast media run polling, public polling, showed that almost over 95% of the people wanted a neutral caretaker government to administer the elections because they don't believe a Which had always been done yes, before. Yes, before. And it was part of the constitution. And she, you know, went ahead with the one-sided election, also promising a dialogue that, you know, I need to avert a uh, constitutional crisis and immediately I'll resume dialogue. But it's almost been a, it's been a year now. She has not resumed dialogue. She doesn't have the mandate of the people to govern the country. And she cannot be given any chance to mm. go on like this, you know, and illegitimately. So a new constitutional crisis has uh, become uh, apparent. The leader of the opposition, no less, mm. a former prime minister mm. of the state, is now padlocked inside her party office. Uh, more than that, <coughs> she's being sprayed with gas mm. and pepper spray. Yeah. Her life could be in danger. The consequences of that uh, couldn't be more grave, really, could they? Mm. You know, you said a new constitutional crisis has uh, come about now. Constitution in Bangladesh has gone out the window, you know, due to uh, mm. the autocratic nature of Sheikh Hasina and her illegitimate government. You know, she has enacted and amended the constitution to um, enact legislative measures that the constitution of Bangladesh can never be changed again, even after her period, you know, ends. Mm. It is absolutely ludicrous and farcical mm. and absurd. Mm. You know, could you have that here in Westminster? Could you no. have it in any part? Well, mind you, we don't have a process. constitution. Maybe, <laughs> yes, maybe we don't that, have a written maybe, constitution. Maybe, maybe that's a better uh, idea. <laughs> so what, what's but going to in happen terms now, of, then? You know, um, <clears throat> she fears any leader who has, you know, she fears Begum Zia because of her democratic credibility, her, you know, in terms of her attachment to the people of Bangladesh. Remember, even during the period of uh, 2006, when uh, at the back end, when we had uh, the interim military backed administration come in, Begum Zia didn't leave the country. Sheikh Hasina did. Um, so she is much more engraved among the people of Bangladesh. She fears her democratic acceptability and her credibility. And out of that fear, she is you know, trying to bar uh, or isolate Begum Zia from the people of Bangladesh. Is she, that will, is she, is she able that to communicate with the people from the office? She is. She is uh, able, she's giving statements yeah. regularly uh, in terms of, uh, so, you know, statements are uh, being issued. Um, by her office, she is issuing, issuing them directly. Similarly, Mr. Tariq Rahman, senior vice chairman of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, uh, last week, uh, last Sunday, in fact, called upon the people of Bangladesh. His speech was aired from London live by a private TV channel, Ekusha TV, ETV. Um, <clears throat> subsequently, following his speech, after the, the TV channel aired it and it received popular democratic response, he called out for the, pe for the people to uh, engage in a democratic uprising uh, to oust this government. So after receiving popular response, now the government has shut down that channel, arrested uh, Mr. Salam of ETV, who is the chairman of ETV, on fabricated pornography charges. So you can see the, uh, the farcical nature of this but, government. Uh, she's <coughs> digging herself uh, deeper and deeper into of this course. hole. Uh, if David Cameron padlocked Ed Miliband into the Labour Party headquarters mm. and <laughs> sprayed him with gas, he would be enhancing the popularity of Miliband mm. Uh, many fold. Mm. The same is mm. almost certainly mm. happening here in Bangladesh. Mm. So what's Sheikh Hasina's way out of this? I think what Sheikh Hasina has done is she is opening up a can of worms. You know, the analogy, the English analogy of opening up a can of, can of worms to sort of duck one bad decision, one bad action, one bad policy. She's opening up another, uh, she's committing another bad action. Um, and, you know, she's running out 